I have a couple of motions I would like to make as amendments to no this. Motions. Clearly, no um, motions. Clearly, conference obtained. committees you no know, do have an opportunity for people to amend a bill. No, there's no um, motion. So I want to be able to present those. No, there's no motions. No, there's none. No. The great state of Wisconsin has been under Republican control, complete Republican control, since 2011. And Republicans' absolute power in the state has led to some amazing displays of force there. Calls. You're interrupting a roll call. Sit down. Right now. Call the roll. Senator Carpenter. Calls. Colin. You're interrupting a roll call and that will not be tolerated. Sit down. We learned later that he actually broke the base of the gavel by banging it around like that that night. Amazing. And, and it is, it's entertaining to watch in a way, at least as a sort of spectacle. But in practical terms, Democrats in Wisconsin almost cannot stop anything that the Republicans want to do because Republicans have a lock on Wisconsin state government. And it turns out a lot of what Republicans want to do with their lock on Wisconsin state government is try to change the rules in the state to make sure that they can stay in power for as long as possible. In the presidential election this year in Wisconsin, the state voted for President Obama. Mitt Romney picking Wisconsin Republican Congressman Paul Ryan as his running mate didn't help statewide. And the Democrats won the state by a seven-point margin. But if you only counted up the vote before Election Day, if you only considered the votes of early voters in Wisconsin, they were even more blue than the rest of the state. President Obama won the state overall by seven points, but he won early voters by 17 points. In Wisconsin, as in most places, if you voted early, you probably voted Democratic. So obviously that's got to go, right? Before Republicans took control of the state government in Wisconsin, there was uh, plenty of opportunity to early vote. Early voting lasted three weeks, and it always included three full weekends ahead of Election Day. Once Republicans took control, they cut that three-week early voting period down to two weeks. And instead of three weekends for early voting, they cut it down to one weekend. But that is not enough, apparently, because last night in Wisconsin, on the last night of the legislature before the shutdown, they shut down the session, Republicans at the very last minute sprung a new bill to cut down early voting even further. So they've already cut it from three weeks down to two weeks and from three weekends down to one weekend. Last night's bill will cut it further so there will be no weekends at all and probably no chance for most people to get there after work during the week either. The bill they sprung on everybody last night would force every county clerk in the state to shut down early voting at 5 p.m. on every weekday and offer no weekends at all. So no voting after work, no voting on weekends. The Republicans moved that last night on the last day of the session and they rammed it through on a party line vote. Wisconsin likes early voting. There's never been any kind of problem associated with Wisconsin early voting. Unless, of course, you consider the fact that most early voters vote Democratic to be a problem. Last night, Wisconsin Republicans also came up with a novel new twist on the state's draconian new voter ID law. Uh, at the same time that the Republicans passed the first big cut to early voting, they also passed a law to require people to show new documentation in order to vote that Wisconsin residents never had to show before and that not all legal voters in the state have. They passed that bill in 2011. It's been blocked in the courts ever since. But last night, late last night, as the last night of the legislative session crept past midnight and into the wee hours of this morning, the Republicans in Wisconsin came up with a new twist on their voting restrictions. Now, what Republicans want you to do is they want you to have to declare when you vote if you are a poor person. And if you say that you are a poor person, that you do not have the right documentation to show to be allowed to vote because, you're not, cannot, because you cannot afford to get that documentation, then you have to sign a form swearing that you are poor. Once you've done that, your ballot will get put in a separate pile from everybody else's and it will get marked as a challenged ballot. And then later on, local officials will consider your case and decide whether you really are poor and if they're going to count your vote. Sounds fair? Sounds amazing. And Wisconsin Republicans in the middle of the night last night passed that one too on a party line vote. And that's where things really got weird. This is so strange, I'm not even quite sure how to explain it. Um, in September, uh, so not that long ago, a few weeks ago, 
the Senate in Wisconsin, which is also Republican controlled, they did something actually very nice, nice and totally non-controversial. It was so non-controversial that every single senator in the entire Senate was a co-sponsor of the measure. What they did is they passed a resolution honoring the victims of the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in Newtown, Connecticut. Now, this resolution does not have any practical impact at all. It does absolutely nothing. It is just a statement of honor and respect from the people of Wisconsin, which passed the Senate unanimously in September. But for some reason, when the Democrats last night in the Assembly brought up that same resolution so the Assembly could pass it too and it could be done before the end of the session, for some reason, that enraged the Wisconsin Republicans. Why would that make you mad? I have no idea. Here's how the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel put it in a way that makes me think they didn't understand it either. Quote, bitter disputes developed late Thursday that sent the session into the early morning hours. Tensions flared after Democrats attempted to take up a bill honoring the children killed last year at Sandy Hook. Republicans rejected taking that up. So the Republicans rejected taking up that resolution. They said they will not honor the victims at Sandy Hook. Even being asked to do so last night made them very angry. How that could make somebody angry, I do not know, but apparently it made them so angry that they then blew up the rest of the night and threw out the rest of the agenda that everybody was expecting. Look, look at this. So it says, tensions flared after Democrats attempted to take up a bill honoring the children killed last year at Sandy Hook. Republicans rejected taking that up and then advanced their bill on anti-abortion license plates, even though they had said earlier that they would not take that up. So that's what they had to stay until two in the morning doing in Wisconsin, voting on anti-abortion license plates that will fund crisis pregnancy centers, which they weren't going to vote on at all until Republicans got so angry about the resolution to honor the Sandy Hook kids that they couldn't contain their anger and all bets and all agreements were off and they went ahead with the anti-abortion thing. What? Things in Wisconsin seem a little out of control. I mean, Wisconsin is supposed to be so sane, so civil, right? Well, in the legislature, at least, since the Republicans and Governor Scott Walker took over in Wisconsin, it seems more and more like Wisconsin is losing its mind. And Democrats, at least, last night, just could not seem to believe it. We have people in this body that act as if they're in middle school and high school and that decide that they can change the rules whenever they, they feel that they can. And it is ex extremely, extremely childish, stupid, asinine. And I could think of a whole lot of other words that I would use, but I believe I probably would be censored. And let me tell you, I do know a few of those words and I know how to use them. I see that the speaker, the actual speaker is here on the floor and before he leaves, I'd like to ask him a question if he would accept one he's not as at his assigned spot so he can't yield um would he i'm willing to wait until he gets into his assigned spot it doesn't appear that he yields is that serious is he serious that the speaker of this house will not yield to a question for the one minute he's on the floor it appears he does not i mean is robin voss are you still in the room anywhere or where are you Gentlemen will refrain from using members. No, you know why I'm not going to refrain? You, you will because refrain. you guys are breaking your word. So I'm going to ask Robin Voss, I'm going to ask Bill Kramer, I'm going to ask whoever I damn gentlemen. please to stand up and explain gentlemen. your behavior to the public of the state of Wisconsin. Or get out of the way and let somebody else do the job. This is, it's, it's insulting. The gentleman's out of order. God bless Wisconsin. We talked on the show the other night about this thing called Wisconsin Nice. And when we did that, we got some pushback from some folks in Minnesota where they claimed the whole nice thing actually really belongs to them. I believe there is enough nice to go around for Wisconsin and Minnesota both, maybe even for Ohio too and Washington DC. But whatever used to be the normal expectations for normal middle of the road Midwestern governance, those days really are gone. In Wisconsin, anyway, those days seem gone.